Today on Jim ZV Adventures, a very special video. Today we're going to do a rebuttal of the video provided by Hillsdale College featuring Mark P. Mills, the Executive Director of the National Center for Energy Analytics. I'm going to provide a link to that video in the description below, so please watch that video first if you have not already done so. Martin P. Mills touts, and I quote, There's a myth about EVs being simpler. That's the essence of the problem. They aren't simpler. They are differently complicated. Your internal combustion engine car has an engine with hundreds of moving parts and a simple gas tank with one moving part. The EV flips that complexity in that it has a simple drive system and electric motor with one or two moving parts, but the fuel tank, the battery, is an enormous machine weighing a thousand pounds or more. The parts that actually move, move at the microscopic level. The battery has a cooling system. It is a very complicated electrochemical engine instead of a thermodynamic engine. You simply swap the complexities. Well, in my response to Mark Mills, I'm just going to say that he is the master of the straw man approach. Let's examine this section of the video. He says differently complicated, like he's made up something new there. He makes that assertion, but then he does not provide a single fact or statistic to back the assertion. He talks about flipping the complexity. There's no flip in complexity. The facts are the internal combustion engine has thousands of moving parts that a battery electric vehicle simply does not have, even the battery, even microscopically. Moving electrons is not a physical process, and the amount of heat wasted in the two systems is massive. The ice wastes upward of 80% of the energy as heat. The battery electric vehicle, on the other hand, wastes less than 10%. That isn't complex, it's just an inconvenient fact. Then he goes on and talks about the battery weighing a thousand pounds, and we'll get into this a little bit more later. Again, he does not mention the fact that the internal combustion engine weighs between 500 and 800 pounds, and the battery electric vehicle just doesn't have one of those. He also fails to mention the amount of materials that must be used to produce that internal combustion engine. He focuses instead on the amount of materials used to produce a battery. Straw man approach. Mark Mills continues his argument, and I quote again, It's very expensive, you know, the whole idea of forcing EVs on people and subsidizing them. The Inflation Reduction Act has massive subsidies, bigger than most people realize. Roughly speaking, they will subsidize EVs to the tune of about $30,000 per car, and even with those subsidies, car makers are losing $50,000 a car. You can do the math, as they say. This is not a smart thing for automakers to do. So again, another straw man approach. Mark Mills would not know smart if it jumped up and bit him in his behind. Let's examine the section of the video. Very expensive. Forcing EVs on people. Again, he drops the government is forcing you to drive an EV argument into the equation without examining the idea that government has forced the population to drive gas-powered cars for almost a century, and nobody's complaining about that. Ask the Amish how easy it is to use a horse and buggy on the roads in Pennsylvania or Ohio. They'll give you a totally different story. The Inflation Reduction Act does have massive subsidies, but Mark fails to mention the subsidies in the Inflation Reduction Act that go directly to the fossil fuels industries. Those are massive subsidies as well. The EV subsidies are ants standing next to an elephant when in comparison. Not to mention, the fossil fuel industries have almost had $25 trillion in subsidies from the U.S. government since they started filling their pockets in 1913. Where is the outrage about those subsidies? And $30,000 a car? There's not one shred of evidence to back that claim. Makers losing $50,000 per car, again, a wild claim without any proof whatsoever. I won't hold my breath while he provides his sources. It's 100% Puma. And if you don't know what Puma is, it's pulled out of midair, and you can substitute other words for the M and the A. 
I won't do that. This is a family-friendly channel. In the video, Mark Mills goes on with his insufferable diatribe, and I'm quoting again. The two canons of the EV orthodoxy is one, if we make people use lots of EVs, they will cut the use of oil because burning oil emits carbon dioxide. And two, is that EVs will be easier to make, they will be cheaper, and they will have lower environmental impact. So first of all, there's arithmetic on this, and we know how many cars are in the world, and we know how much oil is used for those cars. Even if half the world's cars were EVs, and we're not going to come close to that any time in the foreseeable future, it would reduce global oil use by just 10%. And here we go. He launches into his batteries are not green argument that he is famous for. And he says the idea is somehow a clean and environmentally benign technology is that you could be polite and call it myopia. Again, back to the battery, it weighs about a thousand pounds. To make the battery, you must mine the copper, the nickel, the aluminum, the manganese, the graphite, and the cobalt. You must mine that stuff somewhere and then refine it. But this is how it works out in these kinds of metals and minerals to make a thousand pound battery. Somewhere on earth, 500,000 pounds of rock have to be dug up for one battery for one car. All that digging up of that 500,000 pounds of rock is dug up with big machines that burn oil. It's transported by big machines that burn oil. The rock is crushed with big machines in most of the world that burn coal to run the electricity for the machines. Some parts of the world use natural gas. Then you have the use of hydrocarbon, hydrocarbons, oil, and gas to make chemicals to dissolve the rock to get the chemicals out of the rock to supply the chain using hydrocarbons hidden from your car. So in effect, there is a tailpipe for EVs. It's just somewhere else. They emit carbon dioxide elsewhere. They cause pollution elsewhere in other countries. And apparently environmentalists who use to say it's one earth worry about the planet when it's parked in their garage. They don't care about the planet in Africa or the environmental challenges that occur and where they push all the social challenges. Mark Mills filled that diatribe with what I like to call a ton of asserted conclusions without backing his assertion with facts. Let's analyze. The EV will only reduce global oil usage by just 10%. Oh, really? Care to provide the math to back that statement? That's a classic asserted conclusion. It's a straw man argument there are no facts to back that statement. He then states the EV enthusiasts are myopic. He goes on to state the battery weighs about 1,000 pounds and it takes about 500,000 pounds of material to make one 1,000 pound battery. He states a simple Google search will give you the numbers. And so I took him up on that. My research shows the numbers are off by a factor of 2.5 times too high. The real numbers are closer to 220,000 pounds, and that is only for NMC batteries. That's nickel, manganese, cobalt. For the LFP battery, which is lithium iron phosphate, it's around 100,000 pounds. Therefore, we can conclude he is either misinformed or he's a ball-faced liar. I'll let you, the viewer, make that decision. Finally, I want to point out a simple truth that he and the EV haters never understand. Once the mineral is mined one time, 98% of the mineral can be reused. So as time goes on, the mining part of the equation is reduced by 98%. There, that is something that he and all the EV haters always fail to mention. They also fail to mention that 100% of the petroleum mined for your car and put into your car's gas tank will never be recycled. It is burned up and can never be used again. Simple fact, 100% truth. They never mention those facts. Mark Mills again, he makes one funny statement. It's remarkably easy to prove all these things that I've said and written. 
You don't have to be an engineer or a scientist. I'm a physicist and I find it fascinating that not everybody finds these things fascinating. But it's not hard to figure out. You can go to Google and find the information. Google actually doesn't lie if you type in what you're searching for, you know. And if you type in where does copper come from and how much copper is in an EV, you'll get the answer. Well, Mr. Mills, what can I do? Well, I take you up on your challenge. And I did, and you're wrong. Mark Mills says that Google does not lie, and that's good. Google might not lie, but he certainly does. The facts that I have stated in this video come from Google, not from Mark Mills or his invisible bosses in the fossil fuel industry. I have checked Google to rebut everything that you have said in your video. Apparently, he or his minions didn't bother to check the numbers on Google. I did. You can. Please do. I find it fascinating that a physicist cannot do basic math. But I digress. Let me make it clear. At Jim's EV Adventures, I do not accept money from anyone. The fossil fuel industry, the EV industry, the battery industry. I don't accept money from anywhere or anyone. I cannot be bought. I simply look at the facts and make my own decision. Like Albert Einstein said, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Mark don't want you to think for yourself and examine the data. He wants to provide the answer, and you have to agree with him. No thanks, Mark. I will do my own thinking like everyone on this planet should. And here's my challenge. Why is it that Mark Mills and his ilk never talk to you about the amount of electricity that it takes to make gasoline for the car that you're driving? Here are just a few Google checked facts. There are 940,000 oil head pumps in the United States of America, each burning about 9,960 kilowatt hours per month. That's more than 9 billion kilowatt hours per year just to get the oil out of the ground. Add to that 1,300 oil rigs in U.S. waters. Each month, they use 15 million kilowatts of power. That's more than 19 billion kilowatt hours to get more oil out of the sea. Then there are 132 refineries in the United States of America. Each one burns about 196 million kilowatt hours per month. That's almost 26 billion more kilowatt hours to make the gas or diesel. I'm not even going to talk about the energy it takes to move the refined oil from the refineries to your gas station, but let's do talk about the gas station. There are more than 23 million gas handles in the United States of America. Each one uses about 20 kilowatt hours per month. That's 23 million additional kilowatt hours to get the gas from the ground into your tank. And there are only 3.3 million EVs in USA today, and they consume only 1.5 billion kilowatt hours of power each year. Compare that to 55.3 billion kilowatts of hour just to get the gas out of the ground, refined and pumped into your car. Gas cars are currently using 37.2 times as much electricity as EVs, and nobody blinks an eye, especially Mark Mills and his ilk. Mark is the executive director of the National Center for Energy Analytics, a distinguished senior fellow at the Texas Public Policy Foundation, a contributing editor at City Journal, a faculty fellow at Northwestern University School of Engineering, and co-founding partner in Montrose Lane. His online PragerU videos have been viewed over 10 million times. He's the author of The Cloud Revolution, How the Convergence of New Technologies Will Unleash the Next Economic Boom and a Roaring 2020s. That was published in 2021. He served as chairman and chief technology officer of ICX Technologies, helping take it in public in a 2007 IPO. Mark served in President Reagan's White House Science Office and earlier was an experimental physicist and development engineer in microprocessors and other fiber optics. 
He's earned several patents. He earned his physics degree from Queen's University in Canada. To quote someone he has quoted on his own website, Philip K. Dick, Reality is that which, when you stop believing it, doesn't go away. The reality of the devastating effects of fossil fuels is real. It will destroy the planet within a hundred years at the current rate of consumption. Anyone who tells you differently isn't living in the real world. They don't believe in reality. And even when they stop believing it, it doesn't go away. They are living in a fantasy funded by the organizations that are driving mankind to extinction. This isn't Jim's hyperbole session. It's my opening salvo. I'm coming for every political hack there is like Mark P. Mills and all his ilk. I'm going to expose their misinformation, disinformation, and their outright lies. I'm on FUD patrol, and I'm armed with the two most dangerous weapons known to mankind. Facts and truth. And don't think I'm kidding either. This is just my opening salvo. I'll see you all real soon or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. Y'all take it easy.